Hi, I'm Jackie, and today on Tech Talk, we're going to learn how to create a Vault Tech lunchbox just like from the Fallout video games. So, what do you need to make a Vault Tech lunchbox? Well, you need a lunchbox. This happens to be an old Holly Hobby lunchbox, the patina and the beautiful rust on this creature is authentic. It is from back in my day. The reason that I am using this lunchbox is because I want that authentic, broken down, very distressed, made it through an atomic blast sort of a look. I happen to have gotten this from Alley 13. It's a local antique toy store. They do have a Facebook page, so we'll include a link to their Facebook page in the notes below. Well, what else do you need? Artwork. That means the artwork for the front and the back, and all of the little traits that will go around the outside. A whole sheet of these things. Now we get to the fun stuff, which is the adhesive and sealer called Mod Podge. You can get this at any uh, art store. We also are going to need some paint brushes, um, chip brushes, or foam brushes, anything inexpensive and disposable from a hardware store, any local store. We're going to need a little bit of paint. This happens to be some paint I already had laying around in the garage. You probably have something like that too, so you don't necessarily need to go out and buy a whole new can of paint for this project. This is just leftover bits of things. Also some acrylic paint to age. As we, as we add artwork to the lunchbox, it's gonna kind of remove some of this patina just unintentionally, so we're gonna use a little bit of acrylic paint to put that back in. And then other various tools just to help with the distressing. Again, as we need to add some of this aging back in, we have some various tools to do that. Again, really just things you can scrounge out of your own garage. That's kind of the way I roll anyway, so. So what's next? <laughs> well, these little vault boys aren't gonna leap out of the piece of paper onto the lunchbox all by themselves, so now we begin cutting. Once you've cut out all of your Vault Boy figures, I have a couple of tips for you to keep in mind. You'll notice uh, that if you use the artwork that we have provided, there are two versions of the Vault Boy for each perk, one looking in one direction and one looking in the other. And that is because on the lunch box in the game, the Vault Boy does look in different directions according to what side of the lunch box he's on. I happen to be somewhat of a detail-oriented person, so that matters to me. Another tip after you've finished cutting them out, there's sort of a raw edge around everywhere that you have cut that has somewhat trimmed away. The black line uh, has also left kind of a rugged paper edge. A very easy way to deal with that is to take a Sharpie marker and you draw along the edge like so filling in any empty white space left behind by your scissors. So let's talk about a couple of other details. First of all, color choice and paint. Why did I choose a, an off-white lunchbox with a blue edge and why am I using an, a white kind of off-white paint uh, to cover the lunchbox? That is aesthetic choice. Uh, some of the games have uh, different versions of the lunchbox. They're very subtle. It's very hard to really hone in on exactly what the lunchbox looks like. So I'm choosing the things that I like best. I happen to like the blue, and there's another reason. As I paint this box, as you can see, I've already done one test coat at the bottom. 
it saves me a little bit of cutout time with my vault boys because I don't have to eliminate every bit of white space, especially when it comes to pieces like this for perception in order to not lose the relationship between these outer pieces and in, to the distance against the vault boy. I will be able to, as you'll see, as we attach them and age them and affix them and seal, uh, this will eventually disappear without me having to go to all the extra work of cutting out each individual tiny little ear and mouth. Again, as we paint, we do not want to completely obliterate all of, even all of the artwork because what we'll do is we'll also lose this lovely patina and the and the, the rust that's happening, even this old water spot. We want to keep as much as we possibly can. All we're trying to do is trick the eye away from seeing the Holly Hobby artwork that's still underneath there. Very, very thin coat, and actually this is also the benefit to having a, a, a cheap brush. A very nice brush will lay down a very nice coat. We don't want that. We want a very thin, very see-through sort of paint job. You lay it on, take some of it back off. We want to see what's going on in there. We want to see it. Part of the reason that we want to know where this rust and some of these other spots are is because, as I said, we're going to take a tool and we're going to reveal those out from the paint and we're going to use them to our benefit. Again, you don't have to do the front, you do not have to do the back. We're only doing the sides where our vault boys are going to go. And it is easy as this. Mod Podge really just has the consistency of like an Elmer's glue. Uh, the advantage to Mod Podge is that it also is a sealer. So in addition to using it as an adhesive, it also will seal it. Um, I believe it comes in shiny as well. Gloss, I have the matte, which I tend to use for most of my projects. If you want shiny, you can always shine it later, but I like the way the the uh, matte looks for most of my projects. We're just glopping it on. First, you dampen the surface that you want to glue something to. And I'm doing it all up to the edge so that the edge of the paper will seal down nicely along the little ridge here. You just lay it into place and you'll see I've trimmed my artwork to come just just inside the, uh, the ridge here. Now, the second step is to cover it again. And this is where the sealer comes in. It is going to really seal down those edges. It's gonna dampen the paper, make it a little wet and thin and kind of vulnerable that's okay. We want that because that is really going to seal the edges along in here. I have a little bubble there. You add Mod Podge there and it will kind of squish out and really seal it down. And now the next step um, under regular circumstances I would not recommend but because of how we want this lunchbox to look while the paper is still damp and vulnerable, we are going to gently, I'm going to dig through this paper down to some rusty spots. You see the paper tearing away a little? We're scraping the paper away from anywhere that we want to look damaged. We can really dig in with a deep tool. And it doesn't even matter that we're actually removing some of the um, decoration of the paper too, some of the artwork here. All that does is add the legitimacy of how damaged it is. It adds a layer of 
that looks like metal that has been gouged by an explosion or time. There's a spot here. And then there are other techniques as well. This wire brush also has some sharp edges here. You get the idea. As much or as little as you want. Now you just take more Mod Podge on your sponge and you go back over these spots. Now that you can see I've added the front and the back, it has dried. It dries very quickly so it's not sticky. Everything is sealed down, all of the edges, and you see it's a matte finish. It's not shiny. I really went to town on this side around the edges. I loved all of this old rust. So um, I, you also probably saw me um, use sandpaper because a couple of these edges I had a very sharp ridge where I glued down the paper, so I roughed those up to smooth that back. And again, there's some whiteness here, but we're going to deal with that later. We're going to make it look rusty, dirty, but that's for a different step. For now, we need to place our vault boys around the outside. This is a very tricky part, believe it or not, and the reason is the there are versions of this lunchbox online and they often contradict each other what kind of uh, perks you use, what kind of vault boys you use, what direction they're facing, if they're upside down or, uh, or the right side up. I have actually gone into the game and taken screenshots of the actual, it's the Fallout 4 vault boy lunchbox. So this is what I'm going to be basing my vault boys on. I even have them organized by which vault boys they are. The right side is endurance, charisma, and uh, perception. Perception goes in the middle. So when you are attaching them, be sure that you allow space for all of them. So I would start in the middle. You don't want to start at the top and then have them spaced out too far and lose room or the opposite problem. Start in the middle. Endurance goes on top. and Charisma is down on the bottom, and you'll see they're looking to the right. So I'm going to affix those, and then we'll do the left side. Use, there is about a teaspoon couple of teaspoons of water in the bottom of this little container to which I am going to add brown acrylic paint. Nothing fancy, just brown acrylic paint. So that makes kind of a thin version of paint. I'm going to over thin it. Coffee can be used for this as well as very very strong tea. If you over brew some tea will also work so that we can wipe it into the places that we want to cover. And then before it has a chance to set and dry, we just take a clean cloth and we're going to pull it back off. To me this adds a dimension that's more than just rust and dirt, it's also age. So I'm going to continue aging it and putting some finishing touches on it. 
and then we'll be back with the ultra finished product. And here we have it, my very own version of a vault tech lunchbox straight from the wasteland. As you can see, I continued on with the aging process. Simply to my taste, I really like a rustic look. I hope you guys will be inspired and encouraged to make your own vault tech lunchbox. Be sure to check the notes below for some helpful information as well. And keep an eye out for another tech talk coming soon because we are going to take this baby and turn it in to a bottle cap mine.